finally Herd's been released on Windows. There's version 1.0 and all you have to do is just go to the Herd site, download the EXE and follow the instructions and you should have this installed. At first glance compared to the Mac OS edition, you can see that there's a noticeable interface uh, change. So you have all of the commands on the side. So all the tabs here like dashboard, general sites, PHP node, expose, shortcuts, services, and so on all the way down the left. In the middle here, you can start and stop all services. And I'm running the pro version here on Windows, so you have dumps, open mail, and log viewer. And I'm currently running PHP version 8.3. Compared to all the other implementations on Windows of trying to get a dev environment set up, this one is the most straightforward and probably the easiest. Just at first glance here, we can see by typing in PHP dash version, and you can currently see them running PHP 8.34. If you were to type node, I'm currently running version 21.7 of node. We'll just exit here. Composer is also installed and ready to go. Herd is also installed and ready to go. So that's the equivalent to like Valet, if you're familiar with that from the other tutorials on the channel. A lot of the commands that you would find in Laravel Valet are also found in the Herd equivalent. Let's just clear this. So under the Generals tab, you'll find the Herd paths. So you can add a path. I've added the default Herd path and I've also added another path called Code because on my Windows machine, I've set up a different environment and I have some projects there. You can launch this at login if you want. I just checked automatic updates for this one. Everything is pretty much the same as the Mac versions. You have sites, so it pulls in the sites that you have already created, depending on where they are and their paths. You have your versions of PHP, 8.2, 8.1, 8, and 7. You have your max file upload size and you have your memory limits. Node, as I showed you before, I'm running version 21.7.1. Expose, I did talk about in a previous video, guys, so be sure to check that out to see how Expose works, but this is how you would set it up, and it would work the same in the Windows edition. Shortcuts are the same, just you can create your own shortcuts. And over here, you have services, so depending whether you have the Pro version or not, you can add different services just like you can do so in the Mac edition. So I just added MySQL as a service. You could add an additional database service if you choose. You can also add a cache service using Redis or a queue service, broadcasting, search with Milli Search, or you could add a storage service using MinIO or something along those lines. So I'm just going to add another database service here, just another version of MySQL. So I'm going to say save. It's going to generate the service for you. And at any point, if you don't want a service, you just click on the service, you right click and you delete, and that will remove the service. You can add and delete as many services as you need or you require for your projects, depending on the services that are available for this edition of Herd. Mail works a lot like its Mac counterpart, so exactly the same, you're on port 225, and when you create a project, you'll be able to see your mail using the Pro Edition. You also have dumps, and then about the Herd, and you also have your Herd Pro license. All right, let's put it to the test and create a version of Laravel using Herd for Windows. So I'm just gonna go to the Sites directory over here, or the Sites tab, and I'm gonna click on Plus, and you have three options here that you can create. You have a no starter kit, you have the Laravel Breeze, and you have Laravel Jetstream. I'm gonna create a Jetstream project for this one. So just select Jetstream, click Next, name your project. In this case, I'm gonna call it Herd Windows. I'm gonna use the Livewire stack. You can put between Inertia and Livewire. I'm gonna pick Dark Mode. I'm gonna pick Email Verification. I'm gonna use PEST for my testing framework, and I'm gonna target this location to be inside of this directory or this path. I'm gonna hit Next, and when it's all done, you'll have your application created successfully. So we can just go over to the terminal here, to a quick list, and we can see that we have two projects here. One is herd.windows and another project that I had built in from another folder in another path here. As you can see, this is actually pretty easy, pretty straightforward. If you think about how it used to be when you had to create like a project, you'd have to install PHP, install Composer, install MySQL, and maybe use something like Xamp or Laragon or something like that, or maybe even Homestead or something else along those lines or a Docker type environment to get your project set up. So this is just out of the gate, ready to go, pretty straightforward. And I think this will be a welcome change for a lot of Windows users. All right, so here we are inside of our browser and our project is created. So we are running Laravel 11, PHP 8.34, and this is ran off of Herd. So let's just jump back to our terminal real quick. So if you don't wanna create a project inside of Herd using the wizard here, you can actually just do it inside of your terminal. I'm using PowerShell for this one. So I find that creating a project inside of the Herd wizard here, uh, it's a little bit slower than I'd like because I'm just used to it being a little bit quicker on the Mac, but you don't have to do it this way. You can also do it inside of your terminal. You can come back over here, type in the command Laravel new, and then just name of your project. I'm gonna call this herd. And you will go through the set of steps that you would if you were running this on another device. So for now, I'm just gonna have to physically type out Jetstream. And it looks like the stack that I wanna type out also will be Livewire. And this is kind of interesting. So if you want like two of these, you want to pick like, you know, say dark mode, you can just separate them by a comma. You can say dark mode, and then you can say verification. 
and then that should do it. Make sure I spelled that right. And then you can add any other additional services that you need. So we'll hit enter. In this case, I'm gonna choose pass, so I'm gonna choose one. If you do have Git set up on your machine, you can choose to have a repository. I do have it, but I'm gonna say no for this one. And then it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna create the application just as it did in Herd, but just using the terminal and the command line interface to do so. I find that this is a little bit faster. It runs your migrations, and depending if you wanna add a database to your application, you can do so. So in this case, I'm gonna say MySQL. Let's just list our projects. We're gonna CD into Herd. And we're going to check out our project in the browser and we're going to run php artisan we're just going to serve this up so in the browser here i've heard dash windows dot test here that was our old one using herd there i'm going to add this one and here's your project running in windows as well you can type in the url here so you know like herd dot test or you can just type in the local host address with the port okay so let's just try creating a user real quick so let's go to register i'll go here and i'll create just a user so what's interesting is we've created this user and Herd created this for us and we chose MySQL. However, we are using MySQL Lite. So what this did was, if you go to your databases directory and inside here, you'll see this uh, database file and it's database.sqlite. So when I created this user and I registered using the application that I created with Herd, you will see that the actual data is stored inside of this database file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a browser-based app just to kind of like view this file and see what's inside of it. So as you can see here, the data that I actually created for that registration is being held inside of this SQLite file. So what you probably want to do instead of this is have a database management tool. So currently I'm using something like Table Plus, but you can use Navicat, you can use PHP My Admin, or whatever you feel comfortable with. But first things first, we're gonna to have to change in our .env file how we connect to the database. So in this case, we're gonna change this to MySQL. We're just gonna uncomment these. Our database connection point to MySQL, we're gonna use localhost 127, and we're gonna use port 3306. The database name will be heard, root, and no password for now. And then what you wanna do in your database management tool is you wanna go here and you wanna create your database. In this case, I was just like new, I gave it the name of heard, I picked a default coalition, and then from here, you can just create your database, okay? So in this case, I just called this herd, and I don't have a password. Now let's go back to our project, and we'll click refresh here. And as you can see, no table was found because it was using the MySQL Lite that was provided by Laravel with the initial installation. We're gonna run the migration. We're gonna refresh. Okay, now let's try to register our user again. I'm gonna hit register, and we're gonna do the same thing. We've now created another user, but this time around, we're no longer using our database.sqlite file. We're gonna use our database management tool. In this case, I'm using table plus. And if we were to refresh this, so now that you can see in our users table, we have the name that we created, the email, we have our password and our timestamps. So this is something that you might wanna think about when you're using Herd with Windows and you choose to use like something like MySQL or MiraDB or something else along those lines, you will need an additional tool to manage your databases. Or you can use the default database file provided. So that's it for this one, guys. That's Laravel Herd on Windows. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.